Buckle up, it's gonna go by fast. Okay, uh, I'm Adam Wolf. Today I wanna talk about why React is eating the world. And by this I mean that React is not just a dominant web framework, and not just that it influences the direction of all UI frameworks, uh, but also that I believe it points the way forward for backend and for distributed systems. Uh, but first, a little bit about me. Uh, as soon as this slide advances. Um, I work at Robinhood. Uh, we make this financial services app. We're best known for trading, but we also just announced a cash management product, and there's a ton more that we're building. It's really exciting times in FinTech. We're having a lot of fun, and there's a lot to build. Um, now, before I worked at Robinhood, I worked at Facebook for a really long time, eventually on React and React Native, GraphQL, a lot of the things we talk about here. But before that, I worked on chat. And you know, when I worked on chat, there were a lot of problems with it. But uh, one that kept coming back was this unread indicator. And uh, we wanted to tell you that you had new messages, but you'd go to click it, and oftentimes it wasn't there. You'd like already read the message or something like that. Um, and uh, this problem, not, not only did we have this problem, but even when we uh, would fix it, it would keep coming back. And Lee Byron has a great talk later this afternoon where he goes into a little more of this. And uh, I borrowed these slides from Lee because we still work together, which is kind of weird, I know, but super awesome as well. Um, anyway, you know, the reason why this problem was so hard to fix was that uh, it's actually a pretty classic distributed systems problem. You know, we have two independent actors updating the state of two independent systems, the user, the web browser, and then the user's friend like interacting with the server. And when they exchange updates, there's these like unsynchronized race conditions that are hard to program and account for. Now, uh, we eventually solved this with a new architecture that came to be known as Flux. And for the purposes of this talk, I want to focus on the way that Flux forces us to capture every state change in our app as an action and flow those actions in a single direction through our application, unidirectional data flow. We all know about this. It's the pattern that comes with React. Now, this was later formalized by frameworks like Redux, which encouraged us to think about these actions as a log and the state in our application as like a formal redu reduce over this log. For the rest of this talk, I want to argue that this pattern, which is sometimes known as event sourcing, is so powerful that it solves problems for the back end that front end doesn't even have. Uh, but to do that, I have to overcome an objection you may have, one that I had, which is like, what about consistency? You know, if we, if we give up two-way communication and we just go in one direction, like, how do we know that things are staying consistent? We, the consumer in this diagram will always be some amount of time behind the producer. It'll lag, right? And compare this to our intuition about strong consistency, where like we wait to hear back from another system that it's committed a state change before we proceed. This is better, right? Like it's more consistent somehow. Well, in this case, actually, our intuition totally fails us, as it often does with concurrency problems, because uh, the truth is that we can totally observe these systems out of sync. We just have to catch the follower in the midst of an update, and we will definitely get inconsistent reads from these two systems. In truth, in any distributed system, the best we can offer is a bounded staleness guarantee, a guarantee that one system will be no further than some amount of time behind another. So, if we accept that we can keep consistency, what do we gain by adopting event sourcing? And uh, one of the first things that we, that's really better about event sourcing is the way we handle errors. You know, on the client, when we encounter an error, our best bet is just to crash. You know, we start over, reinitialize, and hope we don't end up back in the same place. Um, obviously, on the server, that's just not an option. You know, if, if our server crashed every time we encountered an error, that would be really bad. Instead, uh, we have all this extra bookkeeping to do. We have to remember, if we didn't hear back from the follower, that it committed our state change. And then if we need to cancel, our cancel actually flows in two directions. It has to go backwards to the writer and up the call chain. This is the opposite of unidirectional data flow. It's hard to program and hard to test. Compare this to event source pattern, where we have this consumer, it processes updates. When it encounters an error, it just sets that event aside. And we can actually accumulate state in a place that we tend to call a dead letter queue. And uh, we can even go on to build tooling that lets us inspect the state of the dead letter queue and resolve errors without a code push. Very powerful. Um, the worst thing about strongly consistent systems, though, is the way that they scale. You know, we tend to bottleneck on writes in these systems because they have to be sequential and because they're so synchronous. You know, they're very locky. Uh, the way we tend to get around this is with sharding. 
So in this case, what we can do is we can introduce a few more processes and we'll tell the writer to divide up its writes so that uh, you know, we can actually double the throughput here. And yeah, this totally works. We do this all the time. We do it in our databases and we do it in our applications. Uh, but it's a lot of complexity. For every process we add here, we increase the number of connections exponentially. What's worse about this, though, is that you know, the reason why we often want a distributed system is to separate our read traffic from our write traffic. And when we do that, this picture gets much worse. Because yeah, again, the, the reader can read, can shard the key space, but now it shares state with the writer. So every problem that we're talking about with distributed systems now applies to this relationship between the reader and writer, and if they get out of sync, that's catastrophic. Compare this to how we handle uh, partitioning and sharding in an event source system where we've already done the work to separate how we write from how we consume those writes. And what that means is that uh, we can produce upstream and then make a separate decision about how we want to partition the topic later. Uh, what this means is that we can often add uh, shards at runtime without even changing the code. Furthermore, when we go to introduce a reader here, Everything combines really naturally. We can write to the same topic from different systems, and the downstream process doesn't know anything about how the upstream is sharded. This was a really quick tour of some of the advantages of event source architecture. Uh, we're doing a lot with this at Robinhood, and we tried to capture some of what we've learned in this open source library that we call Faust. I'd love for people here to check it out. If you're familiar with Redux, you may even find some things that are familiar. Uh, that's literally all I have time for. Thanks so much.